uh, shortness of breath, depression, anxiety, yo. Like, oh, when you bump into shit, that shit hurts so bad when you bump into something. Or somebody smack you on the ass for all that shit, burn, feel like you get the injections. The product over time grows. And the reason the product grows is because uh, the product turns into little pebbles that turns into cysts. And the cysts start growing scar tissue around trying to fight it and protect the body. And then now the, the, the cysts got scar tissue and it's push it out and now it's growing so it's like your booty is fighting to trying to push the product out but it's growing you know the scar tissue to protect the body trying to fight it off it's crazy because after my um after i had buggy my butt did get bigger and it was like i just couldn't get it down y'all i could not get it down i couldn't get it down the, the size that i'm now I'm smaller than I ever been within like the last 13 or 14 years of my life, probably. Like, and I'm so happy, like for real, I'm so happy because I got that surgery and I healed up from that. And so my friend Shay, the same friend that I met, that we got the same tattoos, I was supposed to get my boobs redone. Re, uh, redone. I wanted to get them downsized. Like I wanted everything smaller. I said, I'm doctor, take as much ass out as you can. Scoop me, nigga. Scoop a me. You know what I'm saying? So he did what he could. He got me as small as he could to, to make sure I was still safe and not have like a lot of um, imperfections and dimples and stuff like that. You feel me? So after that, September 30th, the same year, I went and got my boobs taken down because I was a 36 triple D. I had big titties. So now I don't even know what I am. I'm part of the no bra committee. They smaller. I think I'm just a, a D, a 34D now or 34B or something like that. Thank God. So matter of fact, this bikini that I got on, the bikini that I got on, I had it for two years. Over two years, I couldn't, I couldn't fit into it. It's from Sheen. You know, some of that shit runs small. So I couldn't fit this bikini. And now I'm wearing it, but it's like now you can see the top a little too big. And, and the bottom's a little too big, but I'd rather it be too big than too little, okay? So, God is good. So, I got my boobs down, size down. I got two bipolarers removals, y'all. So, that's why I've been getting tatted a lot because I'm starting to cover my scars. So, I got this done by my... Shout out to my nigga Shoop in Cleveland, Ohio. You feel me? He got a tattoo shop, Royal Ink, and 216. So he did this for me, y'all. He covered these scars with this, and I really like it because it's like it looked natural, and the brown is like the scar. So I really like this, and he just drew it right on me. He drew it right on me and just tatted it. So those was the first scars I got covered. Um, I might cover my C-section scar. I, I never did. I've had it, what, my baby's nine? I've had it for nine years. Because he was breached. I was supposed to have him vaginal, but he was breached and they didn't have time to turn him. So that's how I got that. But I want um, fruit right there. Because I already got an apple, a bitten apple where my C-section scar, scar is. But I want to put more fruit on the side. Since my thing is the Garden of Eden, I want to add more fruit. Okay, so that's another scar I'm going to tattoo. And then I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I'm going to show y'all. Okay, let me see. So, boom. Y'all see this? This is my scars. So I want to tattoo that. So I'm going to have C's do that. I'm going to cover that. Now the ones across my back, I kind of want to keep them. They're my war wounds. I ain't even going to hold you. Them the ones that let everybody know that I got bipolar removal. And, and I ain't ashamed of that shit. And I, it's the best thing I could have ever did. I spent 37000 37, total with medications, surviving over there. Um, surgery, paying bills at the time that I was gone for the 37 days, on top of transportation, on top of uh, the medicine ball was like a thousand itself, so you don't feel too much pain right after surgery. And then um, I was in such good spirits. Um, I bought my all every friend and family of mine that ever supported me that I could think of. At the time, I bought them a gift out there. So I kept, I went to Columbia with two suitcases, and I came back from Columbia with five, five and a half bags. 
five and a half bags and three bags was nothing but gifts and stuff and i just got everybody something just thought about everybody because i could have died yo and then it's like the second the second surgery was scarier than the first one because the second one i ain't gonna tell it all to y'all because i wanted to be in a you know in a um documentary or my movie or blog or however the network is gonna put it together but the second surgery he had to so he cut me down here he cut me down here twice y'all i've been cut down here twice and it felt like that nigga stitched my leg back to my ass it just just maybe three months ago this leg stopped pulling and feeling like tight in the back like that bitch felt like a rubber band like i had to get limber all over again like he literally stitched my ass back to my leg you feel me I appreciate him so much. Like, I love my doctor to death. I love my doctor to death. I love my doctor to death, man. He is a passionate person, and he cares. He cares so much. So, um, the second surgery, I'm going to tell y'all why the second surgery was more scary. Because I, I had the first one, right? So, now it's getting real. I needed him to cut down here a little bit more. And honestly, it's not like 100% perfect. If I go back, he told me I could come back, and he and he is just like a little inch of skin like that he wouldn't want to cut and perfect it. But I'm cool with it. I'm just tat that shit. Ain't nobody perfect, y'all. I'm cool. My nigga cool with it. I'm cool with it, and life goes on. You feel me? I ain't about to go get cut on no motherfucking mo at all. I'm over it. I just want to work out. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. My, my bodyguard calling me. Yo. No, don't get the kids. Yeah, they staying. They staying with a uh, friend, friendica. She said, lead them where they be, a cut. They good, a cut. They playing, a cut. Damn, nigga, we been trying to contact you to stop you from going. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah. I The list over the stuff from the store. Damn, bug. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right. Question, y'all. Sorry, y'all. My service bad. So it's about, I'm going to get off of here in a minute, too, because, ooh, I only got 1%. Yo, my phone about to die, y'all. Oh, my God. Hold on. Because I'm going to finish telling y'all this. This is some real ass shit. This is why I want to go over there with other women so they have somebody with them. Okay, so, yay, we back. All right, so as I'm laying on the table, legs open, back propped up. I'm, the nurses is talking to me, but the guy with the anesthesia, anesthesia, yeah, that puts it in your IV, he shoots my IV, right? And they telling me that the doctor about to come in in a minute. But I'm still talking, like, my adrenaline is so high because I'm so nervous and I... And I get scared all of a sudden that they all look around in the room like, like this bitch still ain't knocked out. And he inject my IV again, right, with some more shit. And all I remember, y'all, is a fucking tear falling down my eye like I was just so scared and I just was knocked out. And then I just woke up and I'll save that for the vlog because what happens after that definitely is a movie. But... God was with me, and, and my son, Father, shout out to CJ, one the first realest nigga I ever met in my motherfucking life, one of them, you feel me? Period. 
Shout out to you, CJ. RIP, we love you so much, and I know you're still here, and thank you for the blessings that you have rained upon me, along with Grandma and God. Because my two, my two top dogs is already in the sky. Y'all feel me? My grandma and my son father are already up there in the sky. So, um, yeah. So that was a scary moment. I'll save the rest of the story for the movie or the vlog or whatever it may be. But ladies, don't be scared to get that shit out. Save your money. Get that shit out. Yeah, that shit cost me 37000 And it was worth it. And I'll do it all over again. I would do it all over again. And shout out to everybody that I had a GoFundMe when I was on Johnson's Cabaret. See, that's the first time I ever had a GoFundMe. I thought that you could let the money sit there until you get the amount that you need. I didn't know that I needed to cash it out. And, and I thank everybody from the bottom of my heart. I had a collection of maybe fourteen to 1500 that people donated to me to get my surgery. And I never got to receive the money. And they gave the money back to everybody because I didn't know, like, I couldn't keep it sitting there and shit. You know, I was going to let it collect, take the money, and then go get the surgery. But shout out to everybody that did donate for me. I really appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. God still made it happen. I was supposed to be on... Um, Kate Michelle show, I had talked to their producers and everything, but they said that I guess because I physically to a lot of people didn't look like I was going through something, they wanted the more severe cases for her season one, and they told me that they would holler at me season two. I didn't have time to wait for season two. I felt like I was fucking dying. I ain't feel good. So I had to take what I had, get that money up, and do what I had to do. So... I'm just thankful God got it done and he took care of me, yo. Nothing happened to me. Yeah, my, my.